Hey guys, I'm Rachel. I'm George. And this is Smart Smart Money Money Happy Happy Hour. Hour. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. You know why we're saying cheers? Because we're going to be talking about the royal family. We're going across. (laughs) I can't do an English accent. It's terrible. We're going across the pond. Using the loo, as they say. That's right. But this is the Smart Money Happy Hour where we are two friends who happen to be money experts. Talk about all the things you're talking about. And we just happen to be armed with a with a drink. That's right. And George, you and I both host the Ramsey Show. Yes. Where we take calls when it comes to life and money. And this podcast, you know, we just have a little bit more fun with a little drinky in we hand. We do. What's, what, what are we drinking today, George? Today's drink is a classic British drink, one of the favorites of... The queen, rest in peace. A gin and tonic. Do you, are you sure the queen? Yeah, it was her favorite. Gin and Dubonnet is what she Are you serious? Gin and Dubonnet. So a Dubonnet is a different liqueur. It's yes. very boozy. That's her favorite. <gasps> but gin and tonic is a classic it's British It's a classic drink. British drink. Very so that classy. is what we are cheersing to. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the royal family and actually get into how much they are worth. This is big. And you're wondering, what does this have to do with me? It has a lot to do with you. <laughs> so stick around. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> What's your best English accent? Oh, my goodness. You got to uh, give me one line. I have mine. You ready? I'll give you the line. I'll do a, a line, line and give then me a line. you do it. Ready? Would you like a spot of tea? Uh, I'd like the fish and chips, please. <laughs> oh, yours is so much better. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Yours okay. was definitely offensive to all people groups. I will <gasps> say that. I'm just kidding. What does that mean? It was fine. It was forgettable. Oh, it's not going to make the whatever. history books. I'm not an actress. I can't do it. I'm not Meghan Markle. Well, uh, the royal family has been in the news a lot lately. Yes. And a lot of the talk is there's a lot of money floating around now with the Queen's passing. Yep. They have a lot of wealth. It's no shocker there. So according to Forbes, they're actually their net worth is 28. Billion. With a B. Billion dollars. That's a whole lot more than I would have expected. So a billion is a thousand millions. That's right. And remember, your net worth, remember this definition, you guys, your net worth is what you own minus what you owe. So that means the royals, they own a lot. Ooh. Or if do, they have any debt. You think they, they? you think they play with debt? Or do they? It's a question Ooh. we're going to answer here. Let's start with this. We have some figures and facts on what what this wealth is made up of. Okay, I think this is fa- number one. This is so fascinating because do you think that the royals are fascinating? Do you follow? Did you get up and see William and Kate's? No, I don't wedding? have the dark curiosity that you do <sighs> into like the royals and all that. I'm kind of adjacent to it. Are you okay? See, I'm yeah. all in. Princess Die. I mean, I, I'm I'm deep. So this I, is I'm this is more of Di my fan. podcast. I'm Princess Die fan. I'm old school. <laughs> when it comes to my love for the royals. I'm old school. Okay, so when it comes to all of their money, yeah, first, they have private wealth. So this is like real estate, art, jewelry, crowns. So like pendants, literal crowns. Uh, yeah, like like legitimate tiaras, diamonds, thrones. investments, thrones. <laughs> they've got, yeah, they've got a lot. And so all of that is usually passed down generationally. So when the queen passed... Charles actually inherited an estimated $500 million, U.S. dollars. So not- the crazy part of all this, he inherits $500 million and it's tax exempt. <gasps> That's a life hack. The royals are like, hey, all this money, <laughs> can't Just touch this. marry into the family. Like, we kind of are the government, so. Man, it's like a, it's, you know, who else doesn't pay taxes? And here's what's wild. So the queen had a will, which props to the queen. We love to see it. That's true. If you don't have a will, people, that's something Get that one today. is needed. <laughs> yes. Be like the queen in that regard. But the public doesn't find out the details until the year 2112 because it's tr- it's a tradition for the monarch's will to be sealed for 90 <gasps> years. No way. I might make that a, a camel family tradition. Did we know what King George's will was? I don't know. I mean, should we go? I don't know. Just because my name's George, I don't keep up with every George's <laughs> I expect, will. I expect it, George. You do have a very English name. Thank you. Mm-hmm. It means farmer in Greek. So there's a fun fact for you. Yeah. Really? Yep. I'm shocked. You're Sipping welcome. my gin and tonic, shocked that something, the someone old learned English something name. today. Yep. So they've got private wealth, but then they also have the duchies, which sounds like an award ceremony that would happen <laughs> on the office, <laughs> it but does. it's not. This is like What's ancient the... land estates, like think medieval estates. Oh, yes. This is where we get into the so good stuff. So there's two stuff. duchies. Castles. You've got Cornwall and Lancaster. Yes, Lancaster. Lancaster. I don't know how they would say it there. I feel like that's So the that's duchies, right. uh, these estates generate $48 million last year. 
from like tourism, I'm assuming. I guess. I don't know. Generate. How do you generate? I don't think it's rent. Are people renting out these estates no. like an Airbnb? Oh my gosh. George. This is crazy. So the monarch, Charles, what's up? And the crown's heir, William, they get to pocket that profit as private income. Wow. You think tax-free too? I would almost guarantee it. So Man, that's a sweet gig. that's not bad. But what here's the they... catch. They don't actually own it. So when they leave the royal post, the duchies pass to the next person. So they just get the benefit of the income, which, I mean, We're not, not a bad day. not mad at that. 48 mil I'm a not going to be like, oh, dang, I'll just take it yearly. Yeah. That's I wonder if they split it 50-50. I don't know how that works. I doubt it. I bet Charles takes more. I don't so know why the, I get that vibe from him. The monarchy, if you will, owns the properties. The individual royals don't. And so it all the, the amount of money they make is dependent okay. on how well they steward so the portfolio. So here's what's fascinating. Did you see the Meghan Markle interview with Oprah yes. and stuff? Okay. So, that, so she kind of gave me some insight on with the royal family. Because I always just assumed it was just like the royal. Like it, that's just them. But there's kind of these two players is what it feels like. It's like, yeah, you have the people, but then you have the establishment. That's the word she kept using. Oh. So it's like the PR front, the, the, the people that make it almost like, like business staff. because they bring tourism to England, right? So they're like, it's big and they play with the paparazzi and this back and forth, right? So it's like you have these two, these two when things. Disney so Disney does to Florida, the, the parliament the establishment does, does for, for the royals. Yes. <sighs> Brings on a lot of business. Yeah. So that's what's fascinating. So we're, with this, what did you call it? The duchies? The duchies. Okay. So that's kind of like, okay, that's not for the actual people. They get the benefit of it, yeah. but they don't own it personally. And you would think, okay, that's plenty of money. Oh, but wait, there's more. There, There is more. So they also have the crown estate. So the crown estate is a portfolio of prime real estate. Which includes Windsor Castle. Oh, classic. I wonder if Buckingham Palace is in that too. Or do you think that's owned by like Parliament? That's a good question. We oh. didn't do enough research on this. Yeah, we should have figured that one out. That's Buckingham right. Palace. Someone let us know. Let it let us know in the reviews we'll of this podcast. Delegate this to the listeners for out sure. there. Thank so, you. But as of June, so the Crown Estate is estimated at are you ready for this? Nineteen point two billion. Billion. There's a lot of billions in this story. And they're uh, and it's owned by the reigning king or queen. So when when Queen Elizabeth passed away, now Charles owns it, but then they don't get to pocket the revenue personally. So here's what's fascinating. 75% of the revenue, which I'm again, I'm assuming is tourism. Oh, yeah. I guess, right? I mean, I I, I, guess. I know tourism brings in I think we have that further on, but it's billions. Yes. So uh 75% of the revenue goes to the treasury, so the taxpayers. And 25% goes to the royal family for official use only. So royal travel, staff salaries, building upkeep, all of that. That's a so, lot of upkeep. Yeah, but it's a but so $19 billion is what it's estimated at. And the money that it makes every year, most of it goes to the taxpayers, which is I can get fascinating. Down with that. All right. And then 25% goes to like their their engagements. I wonder if like her wardrobe. All the wardrobe and stuff oh, Kate Middleton dang. wears. Do you think it's? Do you think that she gets that out of the twenty five percent of revenue that's from a good question. from the Crown Estate? Now, so that's the Royal Estate, which is so fascinating. A lot of billions. A lot of billions. Now the question is: Is it fair? It feels unfair, Rachel, that they just have all this money that they were just born into. Well, but it's called a trust fund, baby. Yeah, and here's part of it. Yes, they were just. Lucky to be born into the bloodline. But Harry, Harry left. So you think Harry gets any? I don't think he gets no, any of this, does he? He left it all behind, which I kind of have respect for. What if, yeah, what would you do? What if you met Whitney and she was She's like, I don't want to be part of the parliament anymore. <laughs> parliament, that's different. Isn't that what? the thing? No, parliament is oh, like that's the government. The government. In, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Prime Minister, There's too many British Come words on. in this conversation. <laughs> but if or she really American. wanted to, I would be like, all right, we'll go figure it out. <laughs> Let's see if we have any life skills we can put to use. Which, you know, Megan's going to be okay. Very talented actress. She's got her own career. Oh, yeah. Harry, yeah, Harry and Megan, they're great. They're so going to do great. They'll be fine. Mm -hmm. But I, we talked about this. They generate a lot of tourism for, uh, for the British economy. Harry and Megan's wedding alone brought in $1.25 billion. Oh, in my gosh. What did my wedding bring in to the <laughs> revenue of Franklin, Tennessee? Nothing. Zero. Hey, I bet a few hundred bucks. Surely the camels came out and celebrated. It was celebrated. a free wedding, so I think we cost the town That's money. right. You did have a free yeah. wedding. We wow. Only, we cost the economy. Sorry. You're kind of like Megan and Harry. I feel like Thank you. a lot of the stuff. I've been thinking that for a yes. long time now. You just, just have like people them. pay it, and it's done for you, George. Now, 
here's the thing. When you think about this, the monarchy is kind of like the, the OG influencers. Would you agree? This is like an influencer business model. Yeah, I could get there. Just old school. A lot more like castles and stuff involved. Just, just some more castles. Like the queen's kind of like the original, like, hey, swipe up, you know? Okay, so here's the question, though. So you're like, is it fair that they were born into this? So what we teach at Ramsey, though, is to leave an inheritance to your children's children. So like the idea of working hard to get out of debt, to budget, to invest. All of this is like to change your family tree. It's this big why. Legacy. Yes, it's a, it's a le- it. It, it is a legacy that you leave, which if you're a royal, you have a legacy that's being passed down to you. But I don't feel like that's necessarily a bad thing. No. As a culture, we've made privilege into like, you know, it's a very triggering word. And yes, there are some systems that are oppressive. We're not talking about that. Right. We're saying setting your family up for success yes. generations down the line is something we should all aspire to. That's it. I think so. I That's think the great. queen did a great job. Yeah. And part of it is they do have to steward it well. They do have to live on less than they make. It's easy when we're talking in the billions. Yeah, I, was gonna say, I don't know that I could. The struggle is probably not quite there in the yeah. when it comes to the dollars and cents well, for the old royals. They still want to steward it well. And when we say steward, it's just managing it well. Yes. That's it. Yes. It's that simple. Absolutely. So, oh, it's fascinating. But I do think that, yeah. Can I, you I, build I think there's wealth? something, I think there's a beauty in what Queen Elizabeth left. Again, did not know her personally, but from everything I've read. Thank you for the caveat. We yeah. were all wondering, <laughs> waiting with bated breath. Does, does Rachel somehow does, know does the queen? Does she really know the queen? But I, I, from her spirit, I just feel like she left, I'm praying, something great, not just the, on the financial side, but even more. Because when you leave a legacy to your children's children, that legacy is more than just money. It's character. Which includes, yeah, there's some more to, to, to hold on to. So I pray that for that next generation of royals. Thank you for your prayers. So this is an interesting concept. How do you build wealth like a royal? Obviously, we weren't just handed billions of dollars, but we also can't just sit around and go, woe is me. We can build something that is lasting. Ourselves and do it, yes, yes. So what are some steps that you would say, all right, you can't be part of the royal family, but you can be part of your family and do some wise things. There you go. Get out of debt. That's a big one. When you free up your income— then you're able to invest. You're able to do so much more long-term thinking with your money versus short-term, which is so helpful. And and I would say this too. I'm like, there's a dignity that you can give the next generation, your kids, when you are doing this, you're doing the work for possibly leaving an inheritance to your children's children. And so, I don't know, there's, there's something to teach, teaching your kids even just the principles of it so that they can do it on their own Plus, maybe what you leave them, all of it, and it just, it just, yeah, it changes the whole trajectory of your family in the line. Well, I mean, and this is very personal to you. I mean, your dad, Dave Ramsey, has built an amazing net worth and portfolio, tons of real estate that is now going to be eventually managed by the kids. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like a burden with that? No, that's what's so funny. As you said that, I was like, you know what? Like when Winston and I talk about money, it, that never comes even into, like, we're, we don't talk, like, it's not even in my mind about that. Honestly, I'm like, we look at our investments. So regardless of Dave and Sharon, Winston and I have built something of our own that we're really proud of, right? And so there's like that dignity piece that I think is so important. Yes. But there will be a responsibility one day. Yeah, for sure. And those of you listening, if you do this stuff, your kids will feel that responsibility one day as you continue to change your family tree. And here's the key factor. You don't need to make a million dollars to leave a legacy. That's not what we're talking about. totally, no. If you get out of debt and you have an emergency fund and you're investing and you pay off your mortgage before you die and you leave your kids with a pile of money and a paid-for house, that's amazing. It's amazing. That's something very few people do. So that's something I'm aspiring to personally. I love that. Yep. Yeah, and there's so many elements of that part, right, which I think the royals do a great job of, especially Princess Diana, the people's princess, of giving, right, and that generosity generosity piece. That's huge. And that's like with the royals, this is where I do feel bad for them. I'm like, they are public service, like they are to serve the public. Queen Elizabeth, she did that. I mean, for what? What what was the total reign that she had? It was like six, 70 70 70 years. years. Oh my gosh. So yeah, I mean, there's a level of selflessness there that they provide, right? So I think that's a beautiful picture too. I love it. So good. Well, stewardship, investing, legacy, net worth, tiaras, that wasn't in there, but that's <laughs> something we need to talk about. Does that hurt? I feel like that would hurt. How does, what, the crown? It has like little like sharp things that go into your skull Mm-mm. with tiaras. No, it holds in your hair, George. Oh, I don't know. It's okay. like a hair clip. We're all learning something How's today. How's that gin and tonic? You know? It's the juniper. Did you know that is the the main 
ingredient in gin is juniper, oh, the juniper berry. It's very nice. And that's the herbaceous, floral, effervescent. I'm just trying to think of more words wow, to impress you. you. Are you impressed? <laughs> I'm very impressed. A lot of $10 words Are in there. you a bartender? We don't know. No. All right. It's almost uh, time for the end of the episode. We like to close out with every episode with a new segment, Guilty as Charged. Yep, and this is where our producer gives us a new Guilty as Charged question every week. and We don't know what the question is. We don't know. So we have to drink if we have and give context behind our answer. So, Lindsay. Hit us with the truth. What What is Guilty as Charged this week? All right. Have you ever avoided opening a bill because you were too afraid to see what was inside of it? Oh. <gasps> Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I know what mine are. Hit me. You go first. I don't <sighs> want to steal your thunder. Comcast. Oh, wow. I'm the worst. I'm the Do worst. you still have Comcast? I do. Oh, no. Rachel, it's and 2022. I, I know, and I buy stuff on it. Like movies? Yes. It's terrible. What is this, 1997? You're I buying should... movies through your Comcast account? I know, because if I'm going with the kids, I'm like, oh, I don't want to figure out. Yeah, just just buy it, and then I know that's going to be $23. And you do that a few times. It's not good, George. That's impressive that not you still good. have Comcast. I, I, we still have Comcast. It is. The, I canceled and it And it kills me ago. because in every dollar in the budgeting app that we do, because I don't look at the bill specifically. That's Winston. Winston's really great at the details with the money in our house. But when that transaction comes on every dollar and I track it, and then you have to change from last month, because, mm. you know, the budget goes from month to month. So I'm like, I have our standard amount that we spend on Comcast that's very consistent, but not when Rachel buys movies. Then I got to change it, and then I got to lower other cut, and it's very sad. So I hate it. You can't write a Comcast. What's Comcast? Tell the people what Comcast is. If Comcast? Not local. It's yeah. a cable company. It's a cable company. Is it Comcast is local? Is it national? They're national. Xfinity, Comcast. I don't know. I didn't know it in Ohio. Really? I don't know what I should. Maybe you learn something new if you're okay. from Ohio. What do you, well, George, okay, what's the bill you don't want to open? Uh, Apparently bill, not cable. No, mine are, are health care bills because you don't know what you're paying God, when you walk in. That's a good in. one. And so I opened a bill. I went to an ENT. Yes. And I was like, oh, this was a 20 minute appointment. It was like a nothing appointment, just had something checked. And I got a bill for $450. And I have insurance. Yeah, and I sucks. threw up in my mouth and I tried to fight it. And I was like, hey, I only saw him for like 20 minutes and like nothing happened. And this doesn't feel like a $450 visit. And they were like, well, our health care is just better. <gasps> I will not name the hospital. Wow. But they happen to Very run a major pri- university Very- in Nashville. <laughs> And I'm not They're a fan of theirs. Right. Wow. Very prideful. We need to do a whole episode on healthcare. It is screwed up in this country. It is. And I will not stand for it. And that's why I'm sitting. And that's why. I will not. So that's my guiltiest charge. So I guess we both have to drink for this one. I know. Yeah. Comcast. Mine's a lot cheaper than yours, though. Yeah. Okay. So DM me on my Instagram at Rachel Cruz for your fun guilty as charged questions or yours, George. You can do that too. At George Camel with a K. One of us. Yes. Because we might use it in an upcoming episode. These are fun. These are fun. These are great. This was a good drink today. I feel like this is a hard one to mess up. So I highly encourage if you're just getting into cocktails, this is an easy one. So let's talk about it. What would you rate it? Gin and tonic. I'm going to go eight. Okay. I was gonna go nine. Wow! I could have used a lime wedge to bump it up to the ten. Yeah, there, there was, which is a, which is My a big. My apologies. It's fine, Lindsay. We're it's not, not a necessary. We're not mad it's at not it. A necessary we're, Bri- piece. we're British. We're very low maintenance. But it's also a very cost-effective drink. Depending on the kind of gin you use, you can get a cheap one. We had a little more high-end one. It's probably twenty bucks a bottle, and the cost of a liter of tonic water, which is what you want to use, obviously, gin and tonic, uh, that's about three bucks. So you're looking at about you know three bucks a glass. Uh, not including the lime slice. Yeah. So that's pretty good. So recipes in the show notes, very simple. Make it this weekend and let us know what you think. Okay, and when I do a, a drink like that, I get the small cans of tonic. Oh, so, so you you're not wasting a big liter. It doesn't get lose the fizz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go small. Life hack. Especially if you don't need multiple drinks, you know? I love it. It's great. Well, hey, if you like this episode, we know you did. Don't be shy. You don't want to miss a future one. So hit the follow button. Uh, and follow us on social. Click subscribe wherever you're listening. And if you've got a friend who might like this, who is like, I'm not really into money, this is like a little gateway, just to kind of wet the palate. But if they love the Royals. 
And especially if you love the Royals, they're going to love this episode. Terrible British accents. I learned a lot, honestly. <laughs> There's so much. It's fascinating. I would watch a whole documentary on this. Oh, there's so you many should buy royals. one on Comcast. There's <laughs> I'm sure there's one out there. I'm sure there is that I can rent or buy uh, for like $24. Yikes. Jeez, so stupid. No, there's a lot of great, uh, there's a lot of great docs out there with the royals. So. You call them docs? Is that where you're at now? <laughs> a lot of good docs out there. <laughs> I feel like I've watched enough documentaries in my life I can shorten the word. That's fair. Docs. That's a normal thing, George. Sure. Normal people say that. All the time. Jeez. Well, hey, new episodes every Thursday. Don't miss it. We're going to be back here, right? Yes. Do your do your best. Don't lean into British it so much. Just goodbye. Cheers. Cheerio. Cheers. You do yeah, this. Just give me one. I don't know. Are just, you doing vocal rehearsals? Yeah, yeah. We're doing British accents. <laughs> A proper copper coffee pot. Around the rugged rocks, the ragged rascals ran. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. I lost it. That was good. A proper copper coffee pot. Around the rugged rocks, the rugged rascals ran. Over there was Piccadilly Square. Well, Pirates of the Caribbean. Hello, Poppet. (gasps) Hello, Poppet. Hello, (laughs) Poppet.